Welcome to Strangerville, where the only thing stranger than the people are the flora. And the people are indeed very strange. Up in the hills, overlooking the town, lives the Roswell family. Ted Roswell isn't the nicest man, but he has his reasons. He's been mayor of the town for years and will bring technological advancements to the town, kicking and screaming if he has to. Meredith Roswell has been overlooking her husband's flaws her whole life, since his money is so very lovely to her eyes. She's doing her best to ignore all of his messy shenanigans in favor of her dog breeding hobby and her two Pomeranians, Martini and Merlot. The Sigworth family has just moved into a small house off of Strangerville Plaza. Jess is a corporal and a lacking one at that, but she can tell something odd is going on nevertheless. Dylan is doing his best to keep their daughter Christy out of it all. But Christy is a curious child, and the Roswell's grandson, Teddy, is just her age. Speaking of Teddy, he and his mom, Allie June, moved back to town to find everything very changed. Allie June, a true Southern belle, wasn't expecting her welcome after years away to be a particularly warm one, not when she is a single mom, but she expected something. Her parents barely seemed to recognize her. Also new to town is Michael Bachelor, Bella Goth's younger brother. He moved into town to start his military career. He and Bella had a falling out when he joined the military instead of going to college, but it got him this beautiful house, didn't it? But could all these mentions of beauty have anything to do with Bella? George Cahill just wants to be left alone, but all these meddling kids trying to figure out the Strangerville mystery are getting on his last nerve. It's almost enough to make an old military man turn to a life of crime. Not that he was ever really military, and not that he wasn't already crime. But it doesn't hurt to have everyone think that he is military. If only he could find the bag of cash that flew out when old Penelope crashed. Meddling kid or not, Alison Martin is bored. She's tried instruments, painting, a degree in physics from Foxbury, a job in business, even vacationing on a beach in Tartosa. But this mystery doesn't seem boring at all, and it's nice to see her old pal Erwin and hang out with her friends, Leslie Holland and Mark Eggleston, nevertheless. Last but not least, Erwin Prize is convinced aliens are among us, walking around in disguise. Maybe if someone believed him, he could get a job as a scientist at last instead of having his theories discredited. This is the Strangerville Rotational, where we'll be spending a week in every household and advancing the story of the whole neighborhood as we go. We'll be playing at least until the mystery is solved, but perhaps longer if there's enough interest. The first household will be the Eclectic Arts. The Eclectic Arts household consists of Mark Eggleston, Leslie Holland, and Alice Martin. Mark is an art lover, bookworm, and cheerful. He wants to be a friend of the world. Leslie is a bookworm, geek, and a goofball. She is also infected. I'm not sure how or why since they just moved to Strangerville, but perhaps she's susceptible to it somehow. She wants to be a best-selling author. Finally, Alice is a music lover, bookworm, and creative. She wants to be a painter extraordinaire. She started out by playing several different instruments before deciding she wanted to be a painter, so I believe that she's a little bit indecisive. The first thing I have to do upon loading this household is give everyone their college degrees. All three attended Foxbury, since that's where they met, and where Alice met Irwin Prize. Alice has a degree in physics, Leslie in computer science, and Mark in art history. The next thing I did was set up bank accounts for all three of them since they're roommates and need to keep their funds separate. I'm allowing them to have their 20,000 simoleon handout as their combined inheritance from their families that allowed them to purchase the house they live in. 
Mark wanted to get inspired, and the girls wanted to socialize, so Leslie and Alice struck up a conversation while Mark went outside to cloud gaze. Everyone decided they wanted to work on their creative pursuits after that. Alice and Mark painted while Leslie read a book. Leslie had very little interest in pursuing her dream of writing, and instead wanted to do a side job as a programmer. Alice and Mark, however, were already on the road to fame as artists. I have a sneaking suspicion that Mark was meant to have the painter extraordinaire aspiration, and Alice was meant to have the music aspiration, but what can you do? Alice and Mark got closer due to their time spent chatting and painting together, but it was entirely friendly. No romance here, since Mark thought she was entirely basic. Alice ordered a pizza for their first night in the house, which they had as a late dinner. Mark kept painting aliens, which was very apt. He went to bed earlier than Alice and Leslie, and Alice was in the living room with Leslie when she had a strange turn. Alice managed to snap her out of it. What is going on? Alice asked. This is so weird. It's like you're a zombie or something. And have you seen those weird plants? And Mark can't stop painting aliens? Something is going on. I can't remember anything when I'm under. Leslie said, worried. Just an overwhelming thirst and a need to find her. Her? Alice asked, but Leslie didn't have an answer. Let's ask around town tomorrow, Alice said. Maybe someone knows something. Since she wasn't at all tired after her episode, Leslie went for an early morning jog, ending up near the mayor's house on the hill. Such a strange aura there. At the end of her jog, she ended up distracted by one of the bizarre plants. But her attention was averted when Mark came out to talk. He invited her back inside for a quick dance in the living room, and then he decided to try a bold pickup line on her which she was thrilled by, and in return got a whim for going out on a date. I love it when things fall into place. The two headed out to the Eight Bells Bar. Alice stayed home for now, to give them some privacy, and to try to get herself in order. It had been a late night for her and Leslie, after all. Leslie and Mark got along very well, but when she went inside, Leslie introduced herself to a worried-looking gentleman, Michael Bachelor. They got along very well, and Michael instantly formed a crush on her. She, Mark, and Michael played darts and chatted, but the date didn't end very well, since no date-relevant whims were formed, and Leslie started feeling really awkward about how poorly the date had gone. Mark didn't mind, though. Maybe they hadn't done much, but he liked spending time with her. Alice came over to the bar after the date had ended and introduced herself to pretty much everyone. Michael also formed a crush on her. Thank you for your commitment to drama, Michael. Much appreciated. Alice's old pal, Irwin, also visited the bar, and Alice reintroduced herself to him. He also proceeded to form a crush on Alice. I get it, Alice is pretty, but come, come on, guys. The bar was really happy, and they also met Meredith Roswell, the mayor's wife. She liked to spend her time at Abel's, not only because she was quite fond of a good jinx, but also because her husband never seemed to be in the house at night. Very strange. Alice got enough advice about the whole situation with the plants that she decided to head over to the secret lab to investigate a little. After examining the door, she poked around to try to find some evidence that might point her in the direction of what was going on with Leslie. She ended up not getting home until early morning, only to find Leslie in the front yard, probably due to her late night meanderings. Alice headed in promptly to bed, but Leslie and Mark hung out in Mark's room, chatting and laughing together. Mark got the whim to have his first kiss with Leslie, followed shortly by Leslie getting the same whim. The two headed outside to take in the view and have a charming vista while they had their first kiss. Mark then decided to see how Leslie felt about a first woohoo too, which she was wholeheartedly in support of.
After getting some sleep, Alice headed back to the eight bells to see if anyone had any more advice on how to get the door open in the secret lab. She was sure that there might be a way to cure Leslie in there, since that seemed to be the source of what was going on in town. She ended up chatting with her standard three of Meredith, Michael, and Irwin, but didn't have much luck, though Irwin seemed to know more than he was saying. Back at home, Leslie had one of her episodes and Mark saw her. He managed to snap her out of it with a bit of a slap. What was that all about? Some kind of joke? He asked. No, it's this town. Something strange is going on, she explained. Mark and Leslie both happily developed whims to get engaged to one another as soon as the secret was out. Please, marry me. I know it's soon. But together, we'll figure out how to save you from this infection, Mark said. The next day, Alice marched back into eight bells to have another conversation with Irwin. He definitely knew something. It turned out that she would need to get enough evidence to make a dossier for him, and then he'd turn over the key card to her so that she could open the door in the secret lab. So basically, a fetch quest. In an effort to get more evidence, Alice headed over to the Strangerville archives. She texted Mark and Leslie when she was there. All three of them were avid readers and would love spending time coming through the archives. Of course we'll come, Leslie said. I can't wait to get married to Mark. Thankfully, this infection isn't woohoo transmitted. TMI, Leslie. While she was there, Alice decided to get a job as an entertainer. She was feeling really confident that she could handle the Strangerville mystery, painting, and her musical dreams. Maybe if she lived a super fulfilled life, the Watcher would give her some reward traits that would help. Who knew? They ran the archives dry, combing through documents, and eventually all headed back to the secret lab together to try to get the final pieces of evidence they needed. Alice was able to create the dossier just before they all had to go home due to exhaustion. After a quick nap and a shower, Alice left Mark and Leslie still resting and headed back to Irwin's curio shop to get the key card from him, too excited to wait for her roommates. She then headed to the lab to test it out. As she opened the door, spores came spilling out, filling the air with purple light. Descending into the depths of what looked like a spaceship, she was shocked to see some of the hallways entirely filled with a strange violet smoke and spores. Nope, she said, I'm too smart for this. Back home to come up with a plan. Outside, the plants had gotten bigger and stranger, and at home, she got the notification that the bloom had begun. In the glow of the strange green lighting, she headed to bed. She had to work in just a few hours. Clearly, getting that job had not been the best choice. Friday was spooky day, and Mark decided to bake cookies with his low baking skill in preparation of having a party later. Sadly, we all make mistakes. Alice had zero part in this. She just came down to see if there was a fire and then promptly ran outside. Somehow, nevertheless, she managed to die in the fire. Leslie ran outside to plead with the Reaper for her very close friend, but to no avail. Alice had died, either due to poor baking skill or some kind of conspiracy to keep the truth hidden in Strangerville. In the dead of the night, the broken stereo began to play the strange tune station. Leslie, dressed in a Reaper costume to celebrate the holiday, went outside to mourn. To her surprise, Alice's ghost appeared to her. What should we do? Should we keep trying to solve the mystery? Leslie asked. You barely stepped a foot in that fire. The watcher checked. Not to mention the cookies weren't even burnt. I don't think it was even the more fires, Mom. Something weird is going on. You've got to keep trying to solve the mystery, Alice said. And why don't I join the household again as a ghost? We can do this, Leslie. You and Mark will get married, Strangerville infection free, even if it's the last thing I ever do. 
If you like this episode, please comment, like, and subscribe. New Strangerville rotational episodes will be out on most Fridays, and my Strangerville legacy has updates on Tuesdays. The next house in the Strangerville rotation will be the Sigworths. If you're interested in my gameplay style and my gameplay rules, you can go to my website at www.witchlingsummer.com. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day. Bye.